we're going to be working on ruffles. This particular demonstration will be on creating a gathered ruffle. Gathering is the easiest, kind of most efficient and quickest way to create a ruffle. It's also more of a soft, uh, uh, it creates more of a soft ruffle. A ruffle is a decorative edge, usually an edge, um, often at the hem of a skirt or a blouse. You may see it on sleeves as well. Primarily in, in more historical garments, we don't see as many ruffles in modern day dress. Depends on the designer and, and their intent. But a ruffle is a larger piece of material that's reduced down to fit onto a smaller piece of material and it creates a little bit of movement and a little bit of a decorative moment. We're gonna look at gathering first. We will also look at pleating, but this demonstration is on gathering. In order to gather, and this is much, we're going to be sewing these two pieces together at a standard 5 8 inch seam. I'm going to have, I have my six inch square of cotton or, or cotton blend fabric, lightweight. And then I have a three by 18 inch strip of similar material. This one's muslin. This is a, another cotton. The amount of gather that you can achieve depends on the weight of your fabric. The heavier, thicker fabric, the less you can gather it down. The lighter weight fabric, the more you can gather it down. The more, the larger the piece you're fitting into the smaller piece, the more kind of movement and the more full the ruffle will be. And the less, you know, the less it'll be. So you can have a subtle ruffle or you can have a very elaborate, ornate, very full ruffle. You just have to think about the fabric. So the the measurements are not standard. I have done I have chosen to do a three times width gather. So I have a six inch square. Um, six times three is eighteen. So I've gotten an eighteen inch piece of fabric here. Very often you're going to see these done, like I said, on skirts or sleeves. So very often they're in a circle. We're just doing a flat strip right now to look at the technique. What I'm gonna do first, because whenever you are attaching a ruffle to something, you want to note the center. So I'm gonna mark the center, it could just, you want multiple points that are equidistant from one another to be your anchor points when you're attaching a, a something that's been gathered. That way you can make sure you're dis distributing the fullness evenly around the garment and it doesn't all get bunched up in one area or another. So I'm going to find my center. I could measure nine inches over or I can just fold it in the middle and just put a little mark right there at the center. Got a little, little blue mark. I'm going to do the same thing on my square. Again, this is six inches, so I could measure three inches in or I can fold it in half and mark it there. So now I have my centers marked. And the next thing I have to do is I need to run my gathering stitches, my gathering threads. So what happens is a gathering stitch is the using the longest stitch length on the machine and no back stitch. You tend to want a little extra thread at the beginning and the end, tail threads to, to, use, to use to actually do the gathering. And we're essentially just gonna take this fabric which needs to fit, I need these 18 inches to fit into this six inch area. And so I'm gonna slide the fabric along the stitches to collapse it down to fit. And then I'll space that out evenly so it makes a, an attractive ruffle. Now I know I'm gonna be sewing this on at a 5 8 inch seam. And you can create a ruffle. There are a couple of different ways that you can do gathering. I'm going to show you the one that's the most, if, what I consider to be the most effective and give you the, that gives you the most attractive outcome. And that's to have two rows of gathering stitches. Some people may do one. Some people zigzag over a heavier cord. Uh, but I find that the most attractive ruffles come with two rows of gathering stitches. So that's what we're going to do. And I know I'm going to sew at 5 8 so I want a gathering stitch in both inside and outside of my, of my stitching line. So I'm going to go 1 8 of an inch on either side. So if I've got a 5 8 inch stitching line, I'm going to put a gathering stitch at 
four eighths or one quarter and one at six eighths or three quarters of an inch. I will start by lining up the edge of my, actually I'm gonna start by adjusting my stitch length down to the longest stitch length, which on this machine is a, is a five. Some machines might have four, some might have six, some might have a, more or fewer numbers than that even. But for this machine, the long, so it's whatever the longest stitch machine, stitch length is on the machine you're using is what you will use for gathering. We want this to be on zero, so we're doing a straight stitch and not a zigzag. We are not going to back stitch. That's very important for gathering is no back stitch. So I'm going to start with my needle at the edge of the fabric. I've got the end of my fabric over here on the quarter inch line. And sometimes since I'm not back stitching, I'll just kind of hold the threads out of the way to get started. And another thing that sometimes happens, especially if you have a lighter weight fabric, sometimes it'll start to kind of gather or bunch as you're sewing. And you don't want that to happen because it's going to, prevent you from getting nice even stitches later. So what I'll do sometimes is I'm not pulling the fabric through, but sometimes I'll just put a little tension on the back side so that it's laying flatter as it goes through the machine. The machine is still moving it through itself, but just putting a little tension helps to keep that flat as it goes through. So I'll get all the way to the end. When I get to the end, I complete my stitch. I turn my hand wheel toward me until the looper goes down and comes completely back up. Then I'll slide my fabric out of the machine. And I want a good long tail, so I'll pull that a little farther away and snip. And now I've got the first of my two gathering stitches. This was my quarter inch, so now I'm gonna move one to the other side of 5 eighths and do my 3 quarters of an inch. Again, start at the edge of the fabric. I'm lining the long edge up with the three quarter line. I'm just gonna hold that thread to keep it from bunching under. Maybe give it a little tension as it goes through. Then again, I get to the end, complete my stitch with a hand re wheel revolution, bring the looper to the top, pull that away from the machine with a nice long tail. And now I have my two rows of gathering stitches. All right. Now I need to get this attached to this and I need it to fit. So we're gonna start by matching up these corners here. This is the edge I'm stitching it to. I want to match these two edges up as perfectly as I can. So I'll start with that corner and I'll put a pin in perpendicular. Now I've got my center marks so I can get even distribution. I'm going to line up those two center marks and put my other pin. And then I'm going to come down here and match up these ends and put in my pin perpendicular. All right, so now I've got this weird little thing, right? So I've got my edges and my centers marked up, and now I have to actually do the, get the work of gathering to get this to fit there. And it's very simple. You just need to be a little patient and you don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to snap your threads. So I'm going to hold my threads. I'm actually going to hold the fabric a little bit as I pull on the threads. And you see how that's drawing the fabric up. Right? So now I'll just slide this. I'll hold now now I'll hold my thread still and I'll slide the fabric along the thread so I can give myself a little bit more room because I see I've got some more gathering that needs to be done. And then I'll just repeat that process. Now I've gotten it to the point where this is gathered more than that part. So I'm just gonna slide it along my gather until that lays flat. So now I've gathered it so that it fits. 
However, if you see, it's very bunched up in the middle, right? And we, that's not what we want, but that's a place we can start. Now, in order to fix this, I need to take these threads and anchor them because if I start sliding the fabric along these threads, then what's going to happen is they're just going to slide off and these will not be matching in size anymore. So I'm going to take the ends of my thread and I'm just going to wrap them around this needle in a figure eight. Right? I'm just going to go around the top and back around the bottom, around the top, and the bottom, and the top. And now I can't pull this thread anymore, but also if I pull it this way, the thread won't move. So I've done that on this side. Now I need to repeat that process on the other side. And you want to make sure you're getting the threads from only one side like only from the top or only from the bottom, right? These are my top threads. These were my bobbin threads. Those need to go away because I'm working with the top thread, all right? So now I'm gonna hold, not super tight, but I'm gonna hold my fabric so I can slide. It's hard to see, let me see if I can do it from underneath. As I pull these threads, it's gathering that down. Now, like I said, go slow and steady because you don't want to snap these threads. It's getting a little harder because it's getting bunched up. So now I'm going to hold my thread steady, slide my fabric along the thread so it's kind of out of the way. Now I'm going to repeat this process until I get that to fit. Awkward to do from that angle. Right, so now when I go to check, it's fitting in that space, and that's what I want it to do. So now, once again, I will take my thread and wrap it around the needle. So now I have my gathers pulled down. I've got the thread anchored at both ends. And now it's kind of bunched up unevenly. So now I need to make this lay flat in a nice even manner. And I'm going to do that by sliding the fabric along those threads, just kind of back and forth until it's pretty evenly spaced out. And I can line up my edges and we see how that's evenly distributed as opposed to this side. So I'm gonna be looking for how evenly you distribute your gathers. I'm gonna to to be looking for two gathering stitches. I'm gonna be looking for evenly distributed gathers and I'm gonna be looking for a nice straight seam in the middle with your edges matching up, okay? So now I've got this side where the gathers are spaced out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this side together. At this point, we're doing it like a standard seam. We're get, making our edges at, match up and we're gonna be sewing it at five eighths. The difference is one, these aren't two completely flat pieces of fabric. One's been gathered. And you see as I'm going, I'm just trying to kind of work with those, work that, work those gathers out so that they're have an even distribution. All right, so I've done that on that side. Now let's do the same on this side. I'm just gonna slide these guys toward the center. Slide these guys toward the edge. Just keep working that out. 
so those are nice and evenly distributed. Sometimes what will happen is when you're gathering, that edge will get folded down inside, so you also want to make sure you pull that edge of the ruffle up so that it's lying next to the edge of your flat fabric. And again, once we've got that evenly spaced, we're going to come back and pin that. Working all the while to keep everything nice and even. All right, so once we've done our gathering stitches, we've marked our center and our ends, and then we've gathered our ruffle down into place with our edges even. Now we're going to take this to the machine and do a construction stitch. So I'm going to readjust my stitch length to two and a half for construction stitching. I'm still keeping that at zero for a straight stitch. And now we're going to sew this at 5 eighths. Start at the end, and this is a construction stitch, so now we're going to back stitch. You want to pull that needle out, that pin out, before we start to sew. There's my back stitch. And I usually keep my fingers on either side of the ruffle as we go through, just to kind of help keep them nice and even and laying flat. You've got to pay attention as you go on this one. It's a little trickier since you've got a gathered part and a flat part than just the regular standard seam, even though it is a standard seam. Almost there. All right, and now when we get to the end, we will do another back stitch. Complete our stitch to the loopers at the top. Lift our presser foot. We pull this away, and now we want to make sure we're just going to clip the threads that are coming away from the machine and not our gathered threads. So now once we've sewn this on, now when a ruffle is completed, this is what it looks like, right? So this is the outside. So we see that kind of hanging down and having that little decorative edge. Uh, ruffles, we generally press up instead of pressing open because when you press them up, you kind of get a nicer finish on the outside. So that's what it should look like when it's stitched together. Now we still have, and what you should always do is while you still have the gathering stitches in, if you're doing a mock-up, if you're doing a fitting, you'll leave those gathering stitches in place. And then if we want, we can come over here and press it. We'll press it definitely when at the conclusion, but we can press it now as well just to have a look and make sure it's what we want it to look like. Now we're pressing that up. You want your, your fabric, you want this seam allowance to be up toward the flat part of the garment. And you're not going to press down into the ruffle. You're really going to concentrate pressing on that, on the seam itself. Because if you press into the ruffle too much, then it takes away from that softer, flouncier structure. So that's a ruffle. And if we've, once we've done our fitting, once we've determined that this ruffle is correct and complete, then we can actually come in here and we can remove this gathering stitch. 
Now, you don't want to take it out before you have the fitting because if you have to adjust it, it's much easier just to use the existing gathering stitches than run new ones. But I've just kind of pulled out one of the gatherings, one of the stitches. I'm just going to slide this out. And it might break. And if it does, then you'll just go and start over in another spot. Might be easier to get from this side. And you do want to be very thoughtful and careful to make sure that you are getting the gathering stitches and not your construction stitch when you do this, else you'll be very sad and have to do it over again. So I've gathered it so I was pulling so tightly in the middle when I was trying to pull it out on the other side. It's just gotten a little stuck. And it does that on cotton fabric sometimes. So you just might go back and forth from either side. And the reason we want to pull the, I mean, when it's matching thread, it doesn't matter as much. One of the reasons we're pulling this out is because it's contrasting. And I will often stitch gathering stitches in a contrasting thread, so it's easier to find them to pull them out later. But one of the things it does is it releases those gathers up closer to the construction stitch, which usually gives it just a a more attractive finish. And you could be using a seam ripper for this if you have one. I didn't bring mine with me, so I'm using a pin. It's not usually this much of a struggle to pull those gathering stitches out. But anyway, all right. So there you see, once we've pulled that out, it kind of releases that ruffle, those gathering stitches a little more to make that ruffle be a little more kind of finished off and finished looking. Let me not block the light. So that's what it's going to look like when we're done with the gathered ruffle. That's what it looks like on the back side. And you can take this other gathering stitch out if you would like, but since it's on the inside, you don't have to worry about it as much. But if you aren't going to take it out, you do at the very least want to trim your threads so you've got a, a better finish. All right. So that's what your gathered ruffle should look like.